Okay, now it's your turn. Now we have the recognition of the degrees. And we're gonna begin with the chairs of each, oh, water rolling down. <laughs> the chairs of each program, we're gonna start with a film, and we're gonna move to theater, arts, we're gonna move to writing, and we're gonna move to visual arts. And the first person we're gonna bring up is Jamal Joseph from film. And I wanna say something about Jamal, because this is uh, Jamal's last graduation as chair, I think. He's ready to go back and write more screenplays and write more books and make more films, but we're gonna miss him as chair, and I think he's done a fantastic job. <laughs> and after all this, we're gonna have a great party. Okay, first Jamal. To all of the graduates, congratulations to the parents. Um, <clears throat> just a, a quick story and a piece of advice that comes from a person who was like my adopted grandfather. He was a person in the neighborhood uh, that took care of everybody, so we call him uh, Grandpa Brown. And he was in church with his wife uh, when they celebrated their 50th anniversary. And he was a very shy guy, and the pastor uh, said, I want to acknowledge Deacon Brown and his wife on the occasion of their 50th anniversary. Can the church say amen? And the church said amen. And he said, Deacon Brown, will you tell us um, the story uh, of the success of your marriage? Uh, because you are you know, sell insurance and you have a successful business and you have children and grandchildren, not great grandchildren. And he very shyly stood up and he said, well, church, first of all, giving praise to the Lord, amen. Church said, amen. He said, and second, when we got married, my wife and I made an agreement. And the agreement was that I would make all of the big decisions and she would make all of the little decisions. And he said, in church, after 50 years, I'm happy to report there has never, ever been a big decision to make. <laughs> The big decision for the filmmakers and for the visual artists and for the writers and actors and the playwrights uh, and the directors and for everybody that's here, the big decision is the big realization that you are an artist, that art is who you are and what you do. And there'll never be a big decision to make afterwards from this day forward. There'll be a lot of challenges There'll be some ups and downs. Don't sweat it and think that everything depends on this one opportunity, this one play, this one film, this one moment. Because if you go with the flow of your destiny, you will arrive on the shores that you're supposed to arrive on. Be encouraged, have faith, and know that as long as you're making your art, that you are acknowledging that big decision that brought you to this point. It doesn't count on money. It doesn't count on reviews. It doesn't count even on some friends that think you're crazy because you're on this impossible journey. Whatever you need to do to pay the bills, whatever you need to make it through the night and to smile at the morning, working with children, walking dogs, whatever you have to do, remember that you're on the flow of the path and the stream that would take you to that destiny. And remember, yes, we're all depressed by nature, as Tony Kushner says. But also remember that angels do have wings because they take themselves lightly. Congratulations. <laughs> to help with the uh, presentation of the diplomas for our film MFAs and our film, MA, and film M MAs, Sarah Mason, Director of Academic Administration for the film program. As Jamal mentioned, we have two groups of graduates to congratulate today on their graduation. I'm going to begin with the MFA film program. Um, if the graduates will come up to the stage, as I read your name, you can go and shake hands and get your diploma from Jamal. Francisco Ramon Angonis. <laughs> Gina Michelle Atwater. Garen Fisher. <laughs> Drew Lewis Blackman. <laughs> Nicole Marie Branding. <laughs> J. 
Julie Ann Bach. <laughs> Young Chan. <laughs> Lina Calado Garcia. <laughs> Jeremy Frederick Craig. Carrie Marie Kraus. <laughs> Jeannie Donahoe. <laughs> Matthew Nolte Evans. <laughs> Morgan Faust. <laughs> Claire Fowler. Mark Giacomi. <laughs> Alexander Goldberg. <laughs> Antonia Nike Grilicus Lasky. <laughs> Rory James Harry Haynes, <laughs> the professor. Russell Dane Harbaugh. <laughs> Kenneth Jean Hillman. Okay, Jamie Francis Eigelhart. <laughs> Brianna Illick. Sarita Karana. Laura Kim. Juliet Lashinsky Ravine. Rafael Lessa. Juan Le Vega. Xiao Xiao Sally Yu. <laughs> Silka Luisa. <laughs> Christy Lutz. <laughs> Andre de Alencar Leon. <laughs> Graham Mason. Ryan Joseph McGlone. <laughs> Anya Mexen. <laughs> Jeffrey Kenton Miller. <laughs> Jesse Ray Millward. <laughs> Satsuki Okawa. Rainy Lee Park. Andrew Stephen Parker. Alexis Rooney Perkins. Jesus Pimentel Mello. April Dawn Richards. Val Scott Sherman. Sharik Siddiqui. Mobius Simmons. Aaron Julia Villar Sullivan. Ian Swanson. Baruch Taylor. 
Isold Ugadatu. Aaron David Walker. Sarah Zandi. Now we'll recognize the students from the MA Film Studies program. Dee Kavina. Bethany Ann Cherney. Linnea Jumana Hussein. <laughs> Alessandra Luciano. <laughs> Mark F. Newman. <laughs> Zachary James Olson. <laughs> Elise Inez Oxendine. Rachel Lindsay Schaff. <laughs> Joseph S. Valley. <laughs> Neil Joseph Versalin. <laughs> Mong Chen Xie. gets up and leaves. <laughs> so, <laughs> there. so <clears throat> dear actors, directors, dramaturgs, managers, producers and play uh, managers and producers, playwrights, stage managers, congratulations. You are now masters of the world's second oldest profession. <laughs> receiving a Master of Fine Arts degree, but it may not have seemed so fine during your time here. <laughs> For the past three years, you have toiled in dank basements, drafty towers, cramped classrooms, crowded apartments, hallways, closets, even bathrooms. You have coped with heat and cold, unhealthy air, noise, leaks, and rodents. <laughs> Your schedules have taken you from 132nd Street to Tribeca, often coping with obstreperous subways and other obstacles. You have worked through the middle of the night into the wee hours of the morning. And yet somehow, in the midst of all this, you have created beautiful, magical, moving, and challenging works of theater. After this, your professional lives will be a piece of cake. <laughs> The actors and directors and anyone who has taken my theater history class certainly know about Ziyami, the 14th century creator of the Japanese no drama. In one of his treatises, he describes what it takes for a student to be certified. Quote, the teacher's official certification of the student, he says, must be based on a thorough examination of his capacities and devotion. We have examined you, and you are nothing if not devoted. He continues, should certification be given when talent is lacking, a level of accomplishment is suggested that can act, cannot actually be matched. The certification will be fraudulent and the results meaningless. In the Book of Changes, it is written that if suitable teachings are given to those who are not suitable, the hatred of heaven will be aroused. I was worried when we had all the rain, but it cleared, so clearly you are all suitable. <laughs> Ziyami goes on to say that there are three conditions for creating a good student. First, quote, the requisite talent. Second, the student must adore his art and show dedication to that art. Third, he, this is 14th century, everybody's a he. Third, he must have, he must have a teacher capable of showing him the proper way. We admitted you to this program precisely because you had the requisite talent. 
And I would like to think that we provided you with capable teachers. So it is Yami's second point that I want to emphasize. You must adore your art and show total dedication. Almost every major figure of the theater has said something similar. When Stanislavski and Nimirovich Danchenko, for instance, were choosing actors for the Moscow Art Theater, they went through a list. Uh, and they rejected one because, quote, she does not love her art, but herself in art. You have chosen a very difficult art. The American theater is not always a very hospitable place for the development of new talent and new ideas. Yet, during your time here, we asked you to dig deep within yourselves, to find unique modes of expression, to challenge conventional wisdom, and to question accepted practices. We ask you, of course, to learn from those who have been there before you, to build upon practices that work, but also to find new means of expression when what exists has become worn and tired. We ask you to remain true always to the art of theater. We are not asking you to reject commercial theater or popular entertainment or, for, or to forego work in other media, quite the opposite. The greatest periods in theater history were those that were able to raise popular forms to exquisite levels because the dedicated practitioners would accept nothing less than excellence. It is only if you compromise your ideals that the theater suffers. If I may quote from one of the masters, from the start, it has been the theater's business to entertain people. It needs no other passport than fun. You know who said that? Bertolt Brecht. <laughs> Finally, many years ago, I chaired the department at the University of Michigan, and that department was called the Department of Theater and Drama. And people often ask, what's the difference? So let me take you back once more to my theater history classroom. Theater, from the Greek theistai, to see, and from that, of course, the designation for the spectator area, the theatrum, or the seeing place. Drama, also from the Greek, drawn, to do, to act, to perform. So if I can twist the etymology slightly and paraphrase the MTA, if you see something, do something. <laughs> Look at the world and act upon it to make it better. Congratulations, class of 2011. So, to read off your names, I would like to call our Director of Academic Administration, Julie Rossi. And I also want to recognize the other person without whom we could not function, and that is Jamie Hardy. Thank you. Jill Diane Bernard. Corey Bright. Nua Azriel Bukhari. Jennifer Lane Bustins. James Ryan Caldwell. Amna Chima. Clarence K. Koo. Emily Catherine Copplestone. David Fierro. Mariana Geller. Emily Gleason. Nate Grams. Eric Grathwall. Henning Hegland. Sarah Helgeson. Hannah Hessel. Shang Ho Huang. Otso Huapanyemi. Camila Labert. Jesse Longman. Eric Louie. Emily Madison. Erin Mohan. Rebecca Posha. 
Grayson Robert Price Powell. Amanda Raymond. Erica Ruff. Mary Schneider. Matthew Torney. Shelly Virginia. Samara Weiss. And Corinne Jean White. Kushner in and of itself is not a setup for failure. In circumstances such as this, when we're asked to say a few words, most everyone assumes that the writer's few words will be a cut above, just a teeny bit more profound than the others. It's expected that the writer will say something memorable, a pithy witticism, be funny, they like it when we're funny. <laughs> the pressure is on the writer. And when the pressure is on, words fail me. Or perhaps I fail words. Regardless, the blank page looms like the universe before the Big Bang, a vast expanse of nothingness. If I weren't so proud of you, if I didn't so very much want to be here to wish you all happy lives, I would have called in sick. <laughs> Last night, in the throes of desperation, I resorted to influence, to borrow, to quote some other writer's memorably profound and pithy witticisms. So I googled writing plus quotation, <laughs> and I got this. Quotation marks always come in pairs, <laughs> which is good to know, but not quite what I was after. The next site I tried, Writers on Writing, served up a fair amount of treacle, but there was also the occasional pithy witticism and some sensible advice, such as, seize the thing, the words will follow. Do not throw up on your editor. <laughs> there is no money in poetry. <laughs> no money in poetry or prose. Again and again, the writers on writing came back to that same theme. There is no money to be made in the literary arts. Much of their sound advice boiled down to, don't quit your day job. And in the way that one sentence follows the next, I googled writers plus day jobs. <laughs> Who knew? Charles Dickens pasted labels on bottles of shoe polish. William Burroughs was a private eye, Raymond Carver a janitor, T.S. Eliot a banker, Dennis Johnson a croupier, Alice Monroe picked tobacco, Anthony Trollope and William Faulkner were postal workers, Colette performed in a music hall, Milan Kundera was a jazz musician, E.B. White played piano, and Carson McCullers played piano for a dance class. It would seem that there is money to be made in music. <laughs> But there is no money in poetry. <laughs> and there I found my pithy witticism, words I borrowed from Robert Graves. There is no money in poetry, but there is no poetry in money either. <laughs> Bill Wadsworth, our Director of Academic Administration, will come up and assist. He will hand you the diplomas and you will shake my hand, which is going to be very cold. <laughs> it may be clammy. Abdul.
Adiani. <laughs> Stephanie Arndt. Sarah Bailey Nagorski. Aaron Blees. Justin Bonin. Eric Berg. Claire Dunnington. Philip Isle. Natalie Albert. Claudette Bakhtiar Erickson. Erica Garza. Robin Gertner. Glenn Gordon. Lindsay Harrison. Harvest Henderson. Sarah Shu. Reagan Kirk. Izankia Koditu Alexander Landfair. Rose Lichter Mark. Garrett McDonough. Catherine Morris. Jameen Sale. Megan Winter. Tana Wojcik. And Yvonne Wood. Carol to be six minutes. She has to get into a, a vehicle soon. Uh, I promise you five, actually. You know, last night we did, uh, we had a wonderful event at the Fisher Landau where we have our exhibition that Carol mentioned. And it was so great. We have all these families coming in, sort of family night and friends night to celebrate the work. And uh, it's especially amazing to me with all the international students that are in this room and all the families that come in and of course, we have many families that come from the United States, but we have, uh, let me think, who are the people coming from foreign countries? We have uh, Christine from France, she has her family here from France. Uh, Nadia has some, there you go. Nadia has family here from Germany. Uh, Guy has people here from Israel and London. And then Matthew has his family here from Wisconsin. So it's fabulous. It's amazing. Another place. Another place. Uh, and you know, you should really, I want to also thank our faculty who's worked so hard, and of course the, the other chairs, and I think they're just fantastic. That's enough, back, back at me, back at me. Uh, you know, lots of people, in fact the other day at the show, somebody came up to me and said, uh, how is it that your program is so successful? How do you create all these great artists? And you know, I thought about that, because whoops, we're winners, we do win. Uh, we're, we're good. We, we're actually better than good, we're great. Now there's other schools that are good. There's one in New Haven, I can't, I don't know. I know it's up there. But we really are uh, really a fantastic program and I think, well, the answer is, it's admissions. Now of course we're looking for artists of great quality and great vision and great imagination. But mostly in our admissions we look for two things. Tiger blood, <laughs> running right through the body, and Adonis and Venus DNA, we have that. Now the other schools are a little different, and I checked around, we checked our sister and uh, brother schools, can we say that? And uh, they have a different criteria, they, they get good artists, they're good. They check for Hello Kitty Blood and Papa Smurf DNA. So you can see, we win, we're winners. That's how we win. 
Um, the artists that we have are, are really good, and they have, they have almost everything that they need. They're, they're all ready to go. They have, as I said, imagination, great wit. Uh, they're smart. They're well-educated. There is one thing that they don't have, and that's money. <laughs> They don't have cash. I'd like, I'll give you some of this later. And so I want to say to all of you who are here, and particularly to the families, it's really time, well, I know you've ponied up already, but I want to say that when you go to the studios and when you go back to the show, if you see something you like, just call me. I'll take care of it. You can trust me on that. Uh, it would help them. And it's awkward for me to talk about money. We don't want to commodify our program because these are artists really working out of their heart and soul. And of course, I work in an Ivy League institution here at Columbia, uh, an Ivy League East Coast institution, and so as you might imagine, I'm a Marxist. <laughs> I love Marx. I love Marxism, I love Marx, but today, not so much. So we want to support our artists. Uh, but in, in every real sense of the word, there are other things that, that our artists do, and there's a great book. This is nice, isn't it? There's a great, I should put that over here. Sorry. Uh, I apologize, Carol. Uh, there's a great book, and we were talking about it in a faculty meeting the other day by Lewis Hyde, and it's been a very influential book, really, in the art world. And in this book, uh, Mr. Hyde sort of discusses the role of the artist vis-a-vis -vis the larger culture and what is that relationship. And he posits a very simple thesis, that is that the artist the artist's job is to make, an ob make a thing. In the case of theater and film, it's, it's more collaborative. In the case of the writing, writing and visual arts, it's more private. And offer that as a gift to the larger culture. In fact, the book is called The Gift. And I think that's a beautiful kind of metaphor for what, what we do. And it's a nice way to think about it. So it goes like this. So out of nothing comes something. Not bad, right? And out of that something, here we go. The artists make a flower. And from that flower, they make a garden. Thank you. And I want to introduce Emma Balazs, who worked so hard, along with Madeline Sutton and Andrew Haas, our director of an academic administration. Maria Antelman, Adam Axel, Ivan Ari, Matthew Fisher, Nadia Frank, Jesse Greenberg. Nora Ruth Griffin, <laughs> Emily Henretta, <laughs> Chris Jaden, <laughs> Eve Klein, <laughs> Joseph Michael Lopez, Who named Magsay? <laughs> Norbert Klein Martinez Jr. <laughs> Tracy Mullis. Nick Paparone. Rory Jackson Park. Stephanie Geisler Grissom. Christine Fabienne Rebe. Brie Rue. Julia Beth Sherman.
Walter Benjamin Smith. Francisco Vidal Santos. Leah Rachel Wolf. And Young Ju Yu J. I forgot to give you these. Writers didn't get one. Um, so they're in the basket. <laughs> so, so yeah, after, just come on up and um, take one. <laughs> Congratulations, you have all graduated. Class of 2011. Everyone's welcome. Thank you. Congratulations again.